What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. Now, four unit maths is one of those really challenging subjects. You know, you might love maths, you might be taking extension one in year 11, and you might be thinking, do I take four unit, right? Do I go there, it's gonna be loads of work, it scales really well though, what do I do? Um, and secondly, even if you do take it, you've then got the uphill battle of, well, how do I actually do well in what is a very challenging subject. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sitting down and chatting with Kian who took four unit maths. So we're gonna find out from Kian how he made the decision, you know, what influenced his thought process to actually step up and take four unit maths. And then we're also gonna find out Kian's tips for excelling in four unit maths because Kian got a band six scoring 91% in four unit maths. So let's dive in and find out a little bit more about how you too can navigate four unit maths successfully. So hey Kian, welcome. Thank you. So first of all, congratulations. I mean, four-unit maths is challenging. You did very well. Thank you so much, yeah. So um, I want to dial back for a moment to when you were in year 11 um, and you were faced with the decision of subjects for year 12. Um, did you always want to do four-unit maths? Not particularly. I never imagined doing four-unit maths. Like, I kind of, I took extension one maths and I always kind of thought that that would be my limit. Um, and because I originally took uh, business studies um, as part of year 11. And while doing the three terms of that in year 11, I found out that I didn't really enjoy it at all. It was just a lot of memorization, which I was just absolutely horrible at. And I really needed um, to get out of that. So at that time with extension one, I was also doing, our school had a school held subject called philosophy but that was only available for 11, so I'd ha that would automatically drop. So if I wanted to drop business studies, I'd have to drop, I'd have to take up some other kind of unit. And the only option available for me <laughs> was extension to maths. Um, and I was just like, oh, it was kind of hard to decide whether I would take business, continue with business studies or take up extension to maths, considering what I had heard about extension to maths, it seemed very intimidating. So then you've got this balance, right, where you've got business studies, content heavy, not really enjoying it, but yeah. clearly less work. Yeah. Uh, or you've got the possibility of taking for you. How did you end up making the, the balancing decision in the end to, to come to an outcome? I kind of just realized that I was doing fairly well in maths, like I wasn't necessarily topping extension one, um, but I was doing fairly well and my teacher recommended it. So I felt he had confidence in me and I felt that it was something, even though I may have not, I may not top it or do anything crazy like that, which I ended up doing somehow. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. So I, from that, I decided that that was the path I was going to take and that I would just pursue that because I really didn't want to do business studies. <laughs> So it was a little bit of weighing up the alternates really. Yeah. It was going, okay, like I haven't liked some of these other things. Math seems to be a strength of mine. My teacher also agrees. Um, maybe I should double down on this. Mm -hmm. um, now I know you were swapping two units for one unit. Yes. Um, and I think, was that part of the process as well, being mindful that, that four unit maths is a lot of work um, and going, well, okay, at least I'm swapping. I uh, know for me, it because I didn't do horribly in business size, but it did take quite a lot of my time so in my mind the trade-off wasn't as significant because I was already doing a lot of work to try and somewhat do well in business studies. Um, in the end I think it did increase the workload but because I kind of enjoyed maths more it didn't matter to me as much. And so then now you're in four unit maths so you've made the decision, you've taken it. Um, what, what was the workload like? Because I think that's one of the questions that students, you know, I mean, you clearly already had it in the back of your yeah. mind when you were making the decision. Um, is, did you have these perceptions uh, that then aligned to reality in terms of workload? So, you know, did you have these perceptions that it was going to be a lot and it was a lot? Yeah, I would say I did come at thinking it would be a lot and it did end up being quite a lot. So, um, what is that a lot? Yeah. A lot. I... We had, um, me and my friends create a study group. So every Wednesday after, because we had a class on Monday and then Wednesday we would um, meet up after school and we'd stay like two hours um, in uh, our local library and studying maths and doing that together. And that was definitely not even enough. Like I would have to do study at home, like at least an hour a day. 
for 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 you. For for you. So it's basically it's a it's a daily commitment yeah. that we're talking about here. So if you're talking an hour a day, mm. we're talking plus some some you know multiple hours of study group sessions. Are we sort of saying that's ten hours a week of work for the subject? Are we saying it's more? I'd say ten hours. Well, depending on what you, like how well you want to do, but ten hours I'd say including class time, which wasn't a lot. Um, all up, I think. So 10 hours, so if we think about that, you know, really it is, as you said, it's about a little bit over an hour commitment a day. Yeah. So if you do take four unit, you need to be really thinking about then, okay, with all my other subjects that I've got going on, yeah. can I carve out the time to, to make a commitment of one hour every single day yeah. to be able to do the work? And then secondly, really, if that's the commitment, am I going to enjoy it? Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, like, am I going to be wanting to put that time in? So, okay, so you've done an, an hour a day, you know, roughly give or take the 10 hours a week, um, what did you find to be the most effective ways to sort of study and, and, and prepare and, and to really understand the, the material for four unit? I'd say take it slow. Um, I definitely tried, like, usually in maths you get like one or two exercises kind of from your teacher. And that for four unit seems like a lot, but it's very challenging. So I'd say take it slow. I know that I would usually break up even just like one exercise. I'd just do like, okay, today I'm going to do questions one to three because it can be very challenging. You can get stuck on questions and I'd say don't be discouraged by that because that's kind of the level of maths that it is. That is the difficulty of it, but that doesn't mean it's unachievable and I'd say to space it out, take your time in doing that because if you do that, at some point something will click, you will figure it out and from that, if you can consistently do that, um, just the entire thing will come easier because you end up doing similar questions in the end. So it sounds like then that the goal isn't, and, and maybe this is quite different to to you, for example, where you almost want to try to get through as many questions as possible. Yeah. Right? It sounds like almost, um, you know, for for you, what we're talking about here is, well, do less, but go deeper into them in terms of like slow down, make sure you're really understanding the strategies of what you need to do to solve it, um, get exposure to that so that when you're then in the exams, you're not going to be able to solve everything, yes. but you've got hopefully... I definitely, in the exam, I definitely left some questions. I was like, I do not, if I spend time in the exam doing this, I'm not going to get other marks in the exam. And um, I mean, that leads us to exams, right? So in the lead up to an exam, what, what did you do any particular preparation to support? For me, I actually just kind of reviewed the subject because it was more, because for me, I did a lot of um, practice. I knew how to do the, the questions and I had a lot of practice in that um, but during the exams is just more re-sparking my brain making sure I knew kind of the content and the skills that I would need. So how did you review? So when you're saying like you reviewed it for for you, what did that review look like? Um, well I would go over the notes that I took, I made like summary pages and make sure I just knew all the formulas I'd be working with um, and then after that I would do um, practice um, paper questions, whether they were specifically for the topics that I needed work on or just doing general topics to see where I was at and I would kind of review questions that I had a bit more difficulty with to make sure that coming into the exam I was prepared for them. Awesome, so it sounds like it was quite targeted, you were sort of really, you were doing the general review first just to make sure like, yup, as you said, things were sparking and you weren't you know, going to get a mental blank, yeah. but then it sounds like once you had done that it was like, alright, let's dive into specific areas where you thought, oh, if I got that, that'd be a little hairy. I'd probably struggle so yeah. that you could just get that extra bit of confidence so that if you did get it in the exam the next day, you'd be hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> being able to answer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I understand as well you were getting some support with Sarah, um, one of our tutors here at Art of Smart for For You. Um, what prompted you to actually, like, like get help? Well, especially actually in my first term, we didn't have the teacher that we got for the rest of the term because he had some issues. He wasn't able to be with us for the first term. So we had another teacher and it was, she had a very thick accent and it was very hard to understand anything. And I was like, I was not doing well <laughs> in the exam. I barely passed. It was like, everything was not great. And kind of part of that, I thought I needed more assistance, but also knowing kind of the content and what I'd heard from people, there'd be a lot of difficult questions. So I wanted um, someone who could help navigate those difficult questions more. So instead of maybe spending two hours glued on one question, being like, 
what am I doing? Then at least with her help, it could definitely reduce the time and we'd be able to get through more of those difficult questions and I'd be able to understand them better. Awesome. So it sounds like the sessions then you had with her were looking at challenging questions and she'd, if, you know, like give you little prompts and, and suggestions to sort of be able to get, to help you see how to get through the question yeah. quicker, basically. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And then um, what was the best thing about working with Sarah? Um, I don't know. It was just really fun. I kind of weirdly grew a love for the difficult questions because I love the satisfaction of spending so much time just thinking about it. And then at the end, being able to have an answer that I like solved myself. And it was actually really fun just to go through those difficult questions with her. And because sometimes, because it's, it's a hard subject, sometimes she wouldn't even know what the answer was straight away. So sometimes it'd be a bit of like back and forth with her like trying to solve these questions. And I thought that was kind of fun because it kind of became collaborative, even though it's like very much like it's my HSC, it was kind of fun to do that with her. And yeah. It's all just problem solving by the sounds yeah. of it, isn't it? Just like throwing it out and going, okay, how do we get to the solution here? Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. And then um, I suppose reflecting on the journey for, for you, um, you know, if you had to provide a, a couple of suggestions for students, uh, you know, your top three, let's say, suggestions for a student navigating four unit maths in the HSC, what would they be? Um, I'd say don't beat yourself up. It's, it's challenging, you'll find obstacles um, just go through it slowly and take your time because you will get there, you will get over the hill, you will find other hills, but <laughs> you, you know that you'll have accomplished that hill and that's something that no one can take from you because you have conquered that and you can take that um, going forward in the year. And I'd say definitely do it with friends <laughs> because sometimes you can get really frustrated, you can get really in your head, so it's good to do it with people who are also doing the same thing. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend a study group. It makes it much more enjoyable. Um, and it also helps, especially because of like the collaborative element that I kind of talked about. I would also do that with them. Um, and I think that's something that was invaluable throughout the year that I definitely needed. And one final tip. Finally, I'd say go to your teacher for advice. They usually know what they're talking about. Um, and I'd say they usually have an idea, go with them with questions, they are here to help you. They are, again, they're invaluable. I do not think I would have made through the year, uh, made it through the year without my teacher's support. He was very helpful and would always, if you asked him, he would always help you with questions. So definitely ask because they won't know what you're dealing with, what your problems are, unless you tell them. Awesome. So there you have it, guys. We've just heard from Kian. One, uh, you know, how you could think about maybe taking, uh, you know, four unit maths. And, and maybe it's because you're, like Kian, running from another subject you hate. Um, but honestly, I think that the key thing is to just realize that there is a workload. You know, it's 10 hours or so a week. Um, it's almost an hour a day. So in thinking about whether or not to take four unit, you do really need to think about, are you prepared to put in that level of work? And of course, we've also been able to hear from Kane some of the things that you can do to actually give yourself the best chance of excelling in four unit maths, particularly getting into study groups, forming collaborative problem solving groups to really work through and, and identify the best strategies for questions, breaking questions down into parts, um, and also targeted work on difficult questions to build you know, the strategy um, the strategies that you may need in the exams themselves. Um, we wish you all the best as you navigate for unit maths. If you do need any support in getting through that journey, get in touch with the team at Art of Smart. We've got some amazing tutors and mentors that can help you uh, get through what is a challenging, but ultimately, as we've heard from Keen, a very rewarding journey.